<laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Um, this is actually our 17th webinar, so I am so excited. I can't believe it's, it's been that many already. But my name is Lee Rader, for those of you that don't know me, and I am all the way in the state of Wisconsin. And I've been in the cosmetology industry for a couple decades now, and um, I, I specialize in hair, makeup, um, you know, all different aspects of the industry. And um, I'm just happy that you guys are joining us. I hope that you can learn from everything that we're doing. We're going to continue to do it until we run out of guests. So if you know somebody that would like to be interviewed, let us know. Um, but I would like to introduce Jacqueline, and she can actually introduce herself. Yes. Hello, thank you, Lee. Hi, everybody. I'm Jacqueline Menconi. I'm a professional makeup artist in the New York City area from New Jersey. And I specialize in commercials, in television, and in bridal. And I also custom blend cosmetics. So we are so excited to have our very good friend, Yay! Ash Mack, on tonight. So uh, <laughs> I'm so glad to have you on. So Ash Mack, um, also known as her given name of Ashley McClanahan, um, <laughs> I would say more people than not know her as Ash Mack. Um, she has loved makeup since she could walk, basically. So she's self-taught, and she's award-winning and internationally published. Uh, she's a professional makeup artist, of course. She resides and freelances in the Knoxville, Tennessee area. And she specializes in editorial and fashion photo shoots, film, and special effects makeup. So we're super, super, super pumped. Yes! To have you on, Ash. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Yes. I'm so excited. So thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm going to cry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, before we do anything, we always like to start with a cheers. So if we could cheers. That would be great. Can you see me? My th I feel like my thing just paused. Well, yeah, you're frozen you are a little frozen, bit. frozen, and you're frozen. Oh, no. That's okay. That's okay. We'll get you It'll back in a second. second. We can hear you. This all the time. Yes. Hold on. We can hear you, so that's that's good. Yeah, we can still hear you. Uh -oh. oh my goodness! Oh, we're gonna I do a post while while you come back. Yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna go like this real quick. Cheers! I'm cheering with you, just so you know. I don't know what just happened. Oh my goodness. That's okay. We always have some technical difficulties. It just happens yeah, that's with okay. technology. So we can still hear you, though, so that's good. I'm sure it, it will come back as soon as your internet adjusts. But, um, but yeah, if you want to uh, go ahead with your first question, Jacqueline. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, so Ash, yes, this is the question that I feel like allows everyone to really get to know you and that is how did you get into the beauty industry give us a rundown of you know how you started and where you are today yeah absolutely so um, first things first I mean I have always played in makeup I have um, pictures of me when I was like six putting on some bright red lipstick and things like that but being a makeup artist was never something that I ever even intended to be um, it's definitely one of those things where um, like I would just do my makeup or my friends makeup and that was it and so I just thought oh that's cool that they can do makeup for you know X Y and Z but it was never like I didn't even know where to begin if that was something I wanted to look into. Mm -hmm. And one day, um, about four and a half years ago, it was end of August in 2012, I think. There we go. There's my camera. Yay! Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in 2012, a friend called me at like 11:30 at night, saying, um, <laughs> "We need somebody for a film festival." which is volunteer only, and I need it to be extra gaudy and tacky, and you're the only person I can think of. And all I could think of was, <laughs> what? <laughs> um, so much, you know. He's like, you know I love you. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, when do you need me? And he um, was like, 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, wow. So, of course, I'm like, you know, just because you're my best friend, that's the only reason I'm saying yes to you. 
And um, but it still took some convincing. So from there, I went and I packed all of my personal stuff. Like I sanitized it as much as I could and packed it all in little Ziploc baggies and threw it in a duffel bag mm-hmm. and carried it to this um, the set. Um, that was like in the middle of a parking lot. No, it was at a hotel room that they had rented and um, did this uh, film festival. And from there, it snowballed into um, all sorts of other things from more and more film festivals to photo shoots to um, Dead Man's Farm, which is a haunted house that I um, am an assistant manager for in makeup and things like that. So that's, that was the steamroll that got everything started for me was this, you know, me saying yes to, to a friend of mine just to do a little, like, gold and bright blue. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, and so four and a half years ago, I've, since then I've been published in quite a few um, online international magazines, uh, Surreal Beauty, Obscure, Freak, things like that, and then I've also, um, I was voted one of the top makeup artists in my town in 2014. Um, so wow. I worked really, really hard to, to get where I am, but it kind of just fell in my lap, too. So <laughs> that was the main thing. It just felt right, it sounds like. It yeah. did. It did. And it was, yeah. it was in a time in my life where uh, my grandmother had died. And I, this is going to sound, sound really sad, but my grandmother had died like eight months before, and she was my best friend. So I was in this deep, dark depression. Like, I didn't know what I was doing with myself. Mm-hmm. And I was really, like, I just boohooed every single day and then he just called me and I was like you know just to get me out of the house sure why not I could I very 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 much so wanted to tell him no but you know he being my best friend and him convincing me and all that you know and it's amazing amazing to see what what you know a higher power can put in your in your way when you say yes to things rather than no, so it's crazy to think about where I was. Oh, where yeah. I was so. yeah. Wow. So how, how long ago was that? And then, you know, were you just unnatural, or did you go to classes, or did you go to school, or, you know, tell, tell us a little bit about that. Um, that was four and a half years ago, so, and it, and it's, I mean, I'm self-taught, so it was a natural kind of progression. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. After I did that first film festival, basically my friend said, well, the next one is the horror film festival, so if you can learn special effects, then you can do that. And so I went on YouTube, I pulled all these books out, like I bought all these books and I was like, by God, I'm going to do it, let's do it, I love this, oh my gosh, this is like a new passion for me, I, the, the fire is lit, and wow. and so I did that, and did that film festival, and then from there, Dead Man's Farm saw some of my special effects work, which really wasn't that great, so I don't know why they called me, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but they saw it, and the head makeup artist for them, they had just lost their assistant manager, and so for a year, she actually begged me to come to come do that with her and I was like I don't do scary I don't do no no I don't do haunted houses I don't do scary movies it's I'm good and after a year I said you know what my schedule you know opened up and I'll give you a try and just see and so this past October was my fourth season with them and it's it's my favorite holiday and my favorite style of makeup to do and it's amazing like what yes can do for you (laughs) yes can do for you Yeah, absolutely. That is so amazing. That is, I mean, that you learned that much in that amount of time and yeah, got to where you are. That is amazing. Absolutely Thank amazing. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I want to, um, I want to just remind everybody that's tuning in live. If you have any questions for the the three of us, for any one of us, please go ahead and type them in the question section the whole time that we're doing this, okay? And hopefully we'll be able to get to some of them. Um, so, all right, so Ash, um, so give us an idea of, you know, what else you do. I know that um, uh, makeup artistry, although is lucrative for you, is, is not even your full-time gig at this point. So because it fell into your lap like that, you know, you're still a, a professional in other ways. So, you know, give us an idea of your life and, um, uh, and what else you do. 
Yeah, absolutely. So when I first started, I actually worked in a call center. Um, I worked for a company called U.S. Cellular. I was a technician for them, and I handled technical support and roaming support when someone would go outside of the area. So when I first started, my main gig was was you know being on the phone eight hours a day, five days a week, kind of thing. And then um, two years into my makeup artistry, it just did not give me the flexibility to follow my passion. So I felt like, yeah. for me, I I was drowning, or you know, my soul was dying because I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I couldn't, you know, I wasn't happy. So I ended up leaving U.S. Cellular. I actually cashed out my 401k and oh, wow. lived on um, on that for a year and a half and made my money and I actually the makeup industry for me was lucrative enough to um, uh, to allow me to pay what little bills I had because I actually didn't have a whole lot of bills but um, when my mom had her stroke this past April um, you know it was one of those things where once she got back home I needed to have a little bit more money so I could help her out because she hasn't been able to work since then Oh, wow. And um, so with that, I actually found another job in an office um, where I handle scheduling for eight of our um, 19 or 20 reps that are out in the field across the U.S. Um, for a pharmaceutical company. So I still work the traditional nine to five, um, but then I still I market myself like crazy on Facebook and social media, and so I'm still doing the nine to five gigs, but I. You know, even working there, I was just published in Surreal Beauty magazine two weeks ago, kind of thing. Yeah. So I, and then I have a seven-year-old too. So I'm the single mom that, as I'm working nine to five, and as I'm doing this and and doing all these high fashion photo shoots or whatever it may be, I still have a seven-year-old that I come home to and and have to play mommy, you know, um, full time. And handle the calls from the school and, and all that other jazz. So it's a very, very, a very busy lifestyle, it feels like. And I feel like I have 1,200 jobs that I have to do. But mm -hmm. honestly, for me, it's I wouldn't have it any other way because I love what I do. I love the job that I have. And even when I didn't love the job that I had, I still have a passion for my makeup that I could escape from, So which was pretty awesome. So I, I really yeah. want everybody tuning in or watching the replay to you know, if if you have anything within Ash uh, Ash's um, life that maybe you can relate to, uh, that she is such a hustler. She has a million things going on. She <laughs> she's got you know family things going on. Uh, she's had family things going on the past few years. Um, the job change, makeup artistry, her son being a mom having that nine to five and still getting her makeup artistry hustle on, you know, if you can relate to that, you know what, for those tuning in live, if you can relate to that at all, type something in for, for Ash to see, okay? Type something in the questions section for Ash to see. Um, yeah, uh, and I think sometimes yeah. as women, we just wear so many hats, you know, because we're nurturers and we, you know, we get things done. And I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, you're you're like that too, Ash. You're just like, I'm just going to do it and I'm going to get it done and you're determined and I admire that. I really do. So do I. So yeah, I, it has I guess, not been easy. No. And, you know, honestly, when you have a passion, though, it, it's so rewarding. And, like, so that that's my, my next question is I know everybody is probably wondering, you know, how do you go about becoming published? Like, how did that all happen for you? Is it through networking? Is it through just jobs that you've had? You know, how did that come about? Uh, networking is, if I could give anybody, like, the biggest tip that you can walk away from is, one, make sure you do your research. Uh, make sure you look at your, um, what you're doing for um, your state, because every state is different in what they require. One, and then okay. two, network. Network, 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 network. Because if I did not network, if if I had done that first film festival and decided not to go see it and not to meet any of the people, mm -hmm. I would not have met anywhere. I, I came and I didn't have a business card in hand. It was not something like, 
I didn't know what I was doing. I was just coming because I was like, oh, it's a you know, premiere. I get to do this, blah, blah, blah. And um, really, it's a tiny little you know, backdrop. It's, it's not as glamorous as it, as it sounds, I promise you that. But it was still one of those things that you know, when people saw my mo my the film on screen, because it's it was um it was Baby. shown in a local theater, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, fine. They came and um, asked me, you know, well, how long have you been a makeup artist, or you know, can I get a card? And I was like, I don't have a card, but I'll give you my number. And um, <laughs> oh, so yeah, cool. Sure, and you know, I'll give you my number. And so from there. I did more and more film festivals, and then I met photographers that wanted to work with me. And I would go, you know, at that time, I worked like 11.30 in the morning till 9 o'clock at night kind of thing, 8 wow. o'clock at night. And so I would go to my photo shoots because I worked every weekend. I was off on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So I'd go to photo shoots first thing in the morning on Saturday, do my stuff, you know, and then pack up and leave and go to my 9 to 5 kind of thing. And um, and so and then it just snowballed from there. You know, once one photographer see like works with you and networks with you, and you do a good job, they will work with you more and more. And then as other photographers see your work, they will do, they will want to work with you. People will yep. people have begged to work with me because of what of the talent that I've been able to show. And then it also has to do with you know your personality. I, I'm very bubbly. I never meet a stranger. I'm very, you know, happy-go-lucky, and so, um, but I can still be very professional. And so, with that, it's like you're hanging out with your best friend, but you also don't have to worry about, you know, unprofessionalism. Yeah. And so that's the biggest thing too, is you know they liked my personality and they liked me enough that even even though my talent was fantastic, if we didn't, you know, if you didn't. Um, mesh well, you're not going to really work with that person as much as compared to someone that you mesh very, very well with. So. That's true. Absolutely true. That's Absolutely true. true. And you know, in these webinars, we've, we've probably said it a few times, I'm sure, um, that your professionalism is so key. You want to be very friendly and you want to um, kind of mirror the energy that you're getting from your mm -hmm. client, whether that be a producer, a director, or a bride, or whoever, mm -hmm. um, or an actor even. Like if, if an actor is um, very reserved and maybe concentrating on their lines or whatever, you don't want to like run in like a bat out of hell and be like, I'm here. Like, no, that's not the appropriate yeah. attitude oh my God, to have. You just follow me. What? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, that's not the appropriate attitude to have. You have to you yeah. have to hone in on your professionalism and be very friendly, but yet be extremely professional and understand where you're at, what your job is, and how you're supposed to do it. So I love that you said all of that because it's so important. And the networking yeah. aspect, so important. So mm -hmm. tell, moving on from, from that, um, tell us a little bit about how else, other than the person-to-person -person networking, how else you've been um, able to build up yeah. your business, like maybe through social media or what have you. Um, what other, what would you, how would you advise people who are looking into different ways of networking themselves? Um, social media has been the biggest aspect for me. In the beginning, it was socializing at different um, events like film festivals and things like that. Um, two years ago, I ran into a company called Motives and decided to start my business with that. And from there, um, really networking with the people that are fantastic within that business and then my friends as well. And so social media has been the biggest thing. I feel like I'm on Facebook 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which sometimes I wish I could unplug, but <laughs> I have my fun. And so with that, a lot of times I'll do um, live videos and live broadcasts. I have a special VIP group um, for people that enjoy makeup, and so um, I post a lot of funnies in there. and and a lot of different product reviews, and then I'll go live. And I, um, for me, for the people that follow me the most, those are typically the people that um, don't have a whole lot of makeup experience, and and they are. Um, it's not like the uh, typical people that you see Instagram model kind of stuff. They're the everyday nine to fivers yeah. that yeah. don't know what they're doing, and they just want someone to help. And so a lot of times I'll do. Um, I try to be very, very helpful as the best I can, 
And so I'll do live videos and I'll be like, you know, this may seem silly, but this is a mascara and this is the wand and all, you know, and they love it. And so they invite their friends and then their friends invite their friends. And then the next thing I know, I've, you know, I've got a thousand more friends that I've never met in person. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's so fun. I love, I love that. It. And then I guess that's just a thousand new people, or even if it's just ten new people, like who cares, right? Um, one yeah, new person, absolutely. like that's just one more person, or ten more people, or however many more people that know about your makeup artistry, right? And then I know absolutely. you said that you partnered with Motive, so I, I'm assuming then that means that you retail as well. So that's just a few more people that will end up knowing somehow yes. through social media that you retail. And then those are potential clients in more ways than one. It, you know, in-person application clients, and then also retail clients. I think that's, yes. that's that's very smart. Absolutely, and I love it to death. And and people, um, it's funny because um, it's gotten so. Um, and I wouldn't say big. I wouldn't say I'm a celebrity or anything like in my small little town. But <laughs> yeah. um, I have a. Hold on. I've had people come up to me and be like. And, like give me a hug and I'm like hey what's your name <laughs> and it's just because they followed me on Instagram or you know some type of social they've seen me so much on social media that they feel like they know me and so I'm yeah. like sure I give hugs give me hugs <laughs> so, and but I love it I do I, I really enjoy it it makes me feel good when I'm able to help people and to share what knowledge I have and and things like that so I love it. I mean, I social media is great. It it's is. such. I mean, it's like free. It's free advertising, and it's it's just fun. And we were talking actually before we got on the broadcast. It's like everything we do is fun. Otherwise, why do it, right? Exactly. You have, you have to. You have to have fun. And and it's it's funny that you brought up the everyday woman because that's been coming up a lot lately. And a lot of the guests that we've had on have said that we that we all love to empower that everyday woman because there's so many people out there that don't know the basics like you said like yep. how to apply eyeliner or mascara or whatever it is so so I guess my question is you know how you said you use these groups and and you do things like that are you like teaching them and then you mentioned motive cosmetics if you want to just maybe tell us a little bit about how you incorporate that into the groups and, and what that's all about because I'm assuming that not everybody knows about um, you know how that product line works. Yeah, absolutely. So with Motives, it's an amazing product line. I just had to tell you the story real quick on how I even got started because it, it's pretty funny. Um, I actually, somebody had contacted me in regards to it. Um, months before and was like here I'd like to show you I came in and I tried like she just had it laying out in a table and I was just like looks nice but no different than you know anything else that I've seen I don't care whatever and um, right. I would say probably six months later um, a friend of mine that I actually worked with she was like I just got this new makeup I don't know what I'm doing with it will you please come show me and she put it in my hand she put the um, our awesome contouring kit, the Sculpt series in my hands, and I was showing her how to use it, and when I realized, like, how much coverage it gave and how creamy it was, I was like, what is this? <laughs> 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 and, um, <laughs> and got to try all the other stuff and just absolutely fell in love. And so to go to your question, what I, a lot of times what I do with the social media is I do side-by-side -side comparisons. Um, I still buy oh. the um, I still buy the um, other brands and things like that. Even though most like 99% of my kit over the last two years has been transferred over to Motives, um, I still buy the other palettes and stuff because, um, for example, um, a YouTuber Nikki Tutorials partnered with uh, Too Faced yeah. and did the Power of Makeup. Yeah. Love, 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 love that palette. The the colors in that are gorgeous. And so what I did was I came home and I pulled it out on Facebook Live and I was like, I'm gonna do this for you. Let's see how it is. And when I did it, I was like, these colors are are just not as pigmented as I'm used to. And I literally took another color like Motives and did a side by side. And all of my people were like, Oh my god! Wow! wow. Yeah, that was crazy. So oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, I want to look so that up. Writing that one down. <laughs> <laughs> and 
So, and I still share. Like, if I see something, like, um, you know, that I, even though it's not motives, uh, I absolutely love it. And it doesn't compare to other other brands, but I still love the other brands because, well, that's what everybody knows. And so by being able to do that, um, a lot of people come to me. Uh, you know, our new uh, motives just launched that new um, fiber mascara or whatever. Oh, the yeah. best seller I've ever had, and that's just because I'm teaching people how to use it versus other other products and things like right. that. So. Yeah, yeah, I love that mascara. I'm wearing it now. My, me I too. Too. <laughs> that's all We're all wearing to my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. We can't really see, but. <laughs> Right. I love it so much. Okay. So okay, so so we've covered a little bit of social media. Um, I want. Okay. Now I want to. Uh oh, where did Ash go? Screen. I'm still here. I'm still okay. here. Okay. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Lost Ashley there. again. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. So while while you're coming back to us, hopefully. Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We can still hear you. Um, okay. Cool. While you're coming back to us. Give it. I want now you to talk to the people who are skeptical, uh, who are in, who are in the beauty industry, right? They're professionals in the beauty industry. Maybe they're makeup artists. Maybe they're um, salon owners. Maybe they're whatever, right? Um, they're mm -hmm. skeptical of retailing because they don't like to sell. What would your advice be to them? What would your response be to, to to a statement like that? Oh, there we go. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, I am so sorry. Okay. Um, for those that are, for anybody that's, like, because that was my big thing, right. too, is mm -hmm. like, I don't like selling. I don't like pressuring people. Right. Um, I don't, I just don't. I don't like to feel pressured, and so yeah. I feel like if I'm pressuring someone else, I'm still pressuring myself, and I just don't like doing. But honestly, for... The retailing part, I've made more money in my retailing sometimes than I have on a month, you know, for photo shoots, it seems like. And it's all about just really showing the quality of, of product. Products sell themselves. People, you know, yeah. people love to buy, but they hate to be sold. I yes. mean, honestly, I love, love, love to shop, but you're not going to sell me if you're pressuring it down my throat, you know, Absolutely. kind of thing. Yeah. And so for, for me, with, you know, if if you have a product that is professional quality, you know, top of the line but still affordable, it's going to sell no matter what you do. You can mm -hmm. hand it to somebody and just mm -hmm. say try it out and it's going to sell if it's meant for that person. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's what that person needs or wants, it's going to sell no matter what you do. You can't you can say all the right things to the wrong person and they're not going to buy it. But you can mm -hmm. you can say anything you want. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And so, so true. It's so true. <laughs> that's my that's my biggest thing. And so, you know, like to for example, the mascara piece. I mean, I was kind of skeptical on this mascara because I've tried other products in the past, and and so, um, you know, I was like, well, we'll see how it goes. And it's <laughs> just showing people videos and and what it looks like on other people and things like that. I don't even do anything. I literally just show pictures of what other people are saying about it. <laughs> you know, it's not me selling it. It's it's the other customer people. selling it. Yeah. yeah. And so that's been the biggest thing. I mean, you're it, in this society with everything that's changing from, you know, online sales and and social media and things like that. It's so 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 important to, you know, be honest and just and just mm -hmm. let it flow and and not, you know, just it, I'm so passionate I've lost my words. <laughs> no, but it's true though. It's true it's though true. because and it's also, you know, people have to remember that if they're if they are using products on clients, okay, at all. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't sell those products, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Ash, but if you're using Mac or you know makeup forever and these are you know fine lines you know they have professional mm -hmm. quality products um, we're whatever. in my kit for a long time so. mine too mine too make it for maybe not so much Mac but make it forever was in my kit for mm -hmm. sure um, 
you can't retail those products. So when you know mm -hmm. when you're putting products on somebody and they're saying, "Oh, what did you put on me? What is that? Where do I get it? What are you saying?" If you have Makeup Forever and Mac or whatever, you, you know, name the brand. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Name the brand. I'm just yeah. pulling those out just because they're well known. Um, but like, what are you saying? You're saying go buy it somewhere else, right? Right. And yeah. you're not making any money off of it whatsoever. Exactly. Exactly. But, but you didn't sell those products. I mean, they you pretty much did though for the other lines. Company, yeah. Um, you know, for the other companies. But those weren't things that you sold. You, people asked you about them, and then they went to go buy them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Different than um, if someone, if you go on to social media and you're like, oh my god, guys, look, like I just bought a car for my birthday. My my other car was totaled um, at the beginning of December. Aww. Yeah. And um, so I bought a car on my birthday, and I love it, love it, love it, love it. Never heard of it. I don't know anything about it, but it's red and it's pretty and it goes vroom vroom. <laughs> 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 right? It gets me from point A to point B. But there's enough features about it that when I shared it on social media or when I shared it to my friends, a lot of my friends had never heard of it. Um, it's a Ford C-Max hybrid. I mean, have you ever heard of one of those? Yeah, yeah. see? No. I, I, like, it was in the back of the back of the lot, and it was like the third to last car of the hour that I'd spent there, you know? <laughs> like, never heard of it. And... And so, but since buying it and since sharing it on social media, I have a ton of people asking me, where can I get it? What, I've never heard of that. What, what does it do? Like, it's amazing. And so that's no different than makeup or anything else. You know, if you right. see a movie that you like and you share it and tell somebody, you need to go see this, you've just sold that yeah. movie to, um, you know, the production yeah. company. You're not making any money off of that. No right. differently than if you share that makeup. Right. So, you know, and that's, that's so true because, honestly, women are looking for things that work. And, you know, we, have, we are solutionists whether we think so or not because, mm -hmm. you know, I love working with the everyday woman. And they are coming and they're like, okay, I'm tired of trying things that don't work. What do you think I should use? They want a solution. So they're asking. it just makes sense. Yes. For us to have a high quality professional product that we can retail because, you know, being in the salon industry, it, it was never sort of set up that way where we did have access to retail quality, you know, professional product, in my opinion. That's right. really my opinion. Um, so people are just okay with that, but it, you know, the industry is shifting, and, I mean, I've read so many different articles about it. I get, you know, Beauty Inc. magazine and, and whatever, and, and they're all saying that, you know, cosmetics, skincare, they are billion-dollar industries, and they are buying it somewhere. So even if yeah. you think you're not selling it, if you're using MAC, you are selling MAC or MAC because you right. put a lipstick on them, they're going to be like, where do, where do I get that? I like right. that color. I like how it feels. You know, whatever it is. So, you know, to yeah, be able to absolutely. offer high quality like motives that, you know, is more like a Chanel quality but costs like Mac, right. people are, right. they can tell. You put it on and they're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like this, I've never felt anything like this. Or you saying like the pigment. The pigment's amazing. I mean, you can, you can really tell that right away. And so oh, yeah, for sure. It's just is sort of like organically happening. You know, mm -hmm. nobody, yeah. nobody wants to be a sales, a salesperson. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely you know, when it comes not. down to it. So, yeah, and I so also you're smart. To, yeah, you're, you're, I mean, you're very smart, I have to say. But I also, yeah. I also want to just mention, because it was a, a question that just came up that I, I saw, um, this, isn't, this isn't just happening with a bridal client or a personal client. This happens to makeup artists across the board. You know, I happen to specialize um, in television and commercial, so I work with a lot of actors or models and even they are asking me oh what did you put on me right I mean right I mean, doesn't that just happen all the time guys mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah what did you put on me what skincare is that what mascara is that what eyeshadow is that can I make my own palette what palette is that one do you make that palette like mm -hmm. all of these things 
And um, if I don't have a retailable line, or specifically a very, very high quality professional grade retailable line, all I'm doing is selling that product for someone else. Mm -hmm. So it's also with production. Um, it's not yeah. just with personal. So I just wanted and to make that very clear. With, even when I have someone, say I'm at the haunted house, and literally the type of makeup that I do at the haunted house sounds really gross, but I'm literally like ripping people's skin off and, yeah. you know, blowing holes in their head and, and making <laughs> them look dead and, and scary and, you know, but they still ask those questions, even, even though they're not asking about, um, about like what particular product I'm using special effects wise, right. they will still ask that question of, Man, I know that you do more makeup than than this, and I've had a lot of trouble finding a foundation that matches. Or I even had a guy saying, you know, I I have a lot of dry skin with the winter coming up. What do you what do you think I should use? Yeah, not knowing that I sell my own line kind of thing. And um, it's funny because the other um, makeup artist, she was like motives. <laughs> She's like just, just motives. <laughs> and so he was like, oh, I've never heard of that. And it just you know, it just snowballs into a whole other conversation, right. um, and it just leads to, to other things. So, I love. I mean, it's and they're really the best decision I've ever made because it, it was one of those things that before I had found this office job that I'm in. When my mom had her stroke, if it were not for motives and the products that I was selling, and the you know, it was prom season, so I was busy with prom. I would not have been able to sit in the hospital with her every single day, outside of being at you know doing these prom looks as she recovered, because she was in the hospital for a month. And wow. on the days that my brothers were at work at their nine to five jobs, I was at the hospital making sure she was getting her therapy, and that would not have been possible if I had not had a business like Motives. Wow. It really wouldn't. I mean, I'm powerful. ever thankful um, to that. So and that is seriously. powerful. Yeah. That's um, there, there is a question that I, I wanted to bring up. Someone, Lucy, is actually asking, have you monetized your social media accounts? I know a lot of artists with larger followings also monetize their Facebook and Instagram accounts. Do you have, do that, or is I have not? I mean, I have tried different things as far as um, you know, with Facebook and Instagram nowadays, because you have um, all the different things that you can do with that. Um, you have to pay money to be able to advertise, and I've done that, and I've I've actually had better luck having one-on-one uh, -on -one relationships with people than yeah. to broadcast out. And so um, I haven't really monetized those. In fact, I don't do that at all with my Instagram, even though my Instagram is mostly um, my makeup stuff, um, just because it has not fared well for me. And that may be because I don't have as much as large of a following as some other um, Instagrammers and things like that, which I'm totally okay with. Um, I'd rather have those one-on-one -on -one relationships anyway because I, I get more fulfillment out of that and they're able to get more of what they're mm -hmm. needing rather than seeing a picture and clicking on it, you know, just because. So, But it, that's a fantastic question. And you're question. building, yeah, you're building that trust and relationship with people and you are the professional, which is why people are reaching out to you because they trust your opinion and they want to know, like, they trust you that you're going to recommend something that they're going to like versus right. you just being um, paid by the companies to promote their products. And I feel like while that's been working, I feel like people are sort of becoming almost um, aware of it. And so they're, they're wanting more like real things and they, they're trusting more like professionals like us, like, okay, we want to know like, what do you use to, you know, wash your face? Like, are you just promoting that product or is it something that you would use on yourself? So right. I feel like there's been sort of a shift that way where people are like, no, we want, we want to know like what's real and celebrity endorsements, you know, it's been proven that it's not always as effective because they're like, okay, we know that that person is not using that hair color to color their hair. They're just yeah. getting paid to endorse yeah. that product. So, um, you know, 
put at work for some people, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that it, it may, but in the long run, there's nothing like building those relationships, like you said. No, relationship really. building is crucial. Crucial. And it's one of those yeah. things that even in my, um, because I have a Facebook, like a professional Facebook page, and then I have a private, what I call my VIPs or MVPs, um, and I do, I very rarely post anything on my professional page because the way that Facebook's algorithms work, which is their yeah. technology behind who can see what and when, um, unless I pay good money for people to, to see this, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. But when I post in my groups, um, everybody, you know, within that comments and likes and, and shares frequently is going to see that. And those are the people that, want to see that, you know, and right. it's one of those things that when I do my Facebook lives, because I do a lot of Facebook lives, is I tell them, I, I tell them wholeheartedly, I do not share these products with you because I have to, I share them, or that, you know, just to make money off them, I don't share them to sell them, I share them because I love them, and I truly do, and if you don't believe that, please spend five minutes with me and you will find out. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> so, so and true. It's, and we from have, there, I mean, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have another question, um, okay. and I think it's a really good one. And um, it could be for you, Ash. It could be for you, Lee. You know, whichever, whoever. We have, uh, do any of you provide private lessons with your clients using motives? And I guess the follow-up question to that would be, how, how does that go for you? Who wants to take it? I know you do this a lot, Lee. Okay, go, go for it, Ash. Yeah, yeah. I'll, let, I'll let Ash. Ash actually answer first because she's the guest. Yes, so she ahead. is. Girl. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I do I do a lot of private lessons. Um in and I do parties and stuff too, but what I typically do is, you know, I basically say, you know, I'll do this. I want you to really test the products and make sure you love the products before in fact my, my most recent one was at a um sushi house, I went and met someone for hibachi and what? put out this line of um, lipsticks and let her try the new mascara because I have disposable wands that I keep in my purse and and I was like, this is how you apply it. Like, I love like, it. Like, <laughs> you know, it was before our food came because we specifically met, she was like, I really want to try the lipstick that I'm wearing and she, she said, I want to try the new foundation and I said, well, do you want to have lunch with me? And she's like, yeah, let's, you know, we live in the same town so let's meet up. So we met up, we, you know, caught up because I did a photo shoot with her years ago and um, ordered our food. And then in between um, us ordering our food and our food coming, I pulled out all the lipsticks. I have um, disposable wands and I swatched them all off the back of her hand. And I gave her a disposable yeah. wand for the mascara and a mirror. And I said, this is how you do it. And this is how you apply it. And here you go. And, um, not only did we eat lunch and have a fantastic time, she, you know, bought quite a few products from me right there from at the table. Um, and so, and then I have other customer or clients where I've done um, contouring tutorials or, you know, they, that's, that's the biggest one I get is how do you contour because it's such a, the trend yes. right now. Yeah. And, um, and so I have another client that, Every month, month and a half, I get an email saying, you have a new order. And, you know, those are my favorite when I get emails and I didn't do anything because <laughs> she's run out of that product or whatever it may, may be that she's wanting. And she bought it for me because, you know, I said, I will teach you and I'm not going to charge you to teach you. Um, but all mm -hmm. I ask is that you buy your products for me. And so we made that agreement and that's, that's what she's done, you know, for the last year and a half kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. And so it. It's just, again, building that relationship and, and teaching that. But it's worked well. The one-on-ones have worked well for me yeah. in that regard. That I, and Facebook yeah. Live versus anything else. So, yeah. I absolutely yeah, love meeting with one-on-one -on -one with people. In fact, this whole last, I guess, year, I have pretty much devoted myself to working with the everyday woman, teaching them whatever it is they want to know. So... Um, I think it was what in February of last year I started with the first campaign and I ended up doing two campaigns last year and I live in a smaller town I think there's I don't know 7,500 people here and like you said Ash like I go out now and people come up to me and they're like oh my gosh can I come see you I don't I've never worn eyeliner nobody's ever taught me um, you know so I absolutely 
that is my passion and maybe it, it has to do with because I was always behind the chair doing hair I'm retired from that now and so now I have the time to just sit down with them and it's like okay what do you want to know do you have a skincare routine you, you do you have a foundation you like you know what is it that you expect out of today and everybody has a different answer but they all leave feeling more confident and I'm empowering them to go home and I teach them how to do it I don't just do it yes. and I teach them and they're like oh my gosh like I think I can do this and it's yeah. so rewarding to just it have is. I mean and oh. like honestly the people that I worked with at the beginning of the year were all over the age of 35 and they're like I can't believe I'm like in my 40s and I've never I've never worn eyeliner or I've, I've never found a foundation I like or They've never had anybody sit down with them and just teach them basics and, and little things. And honestly, that is what people are wanting right now. Yeah. And so, of course, you put it on them and they're like, okay, I want all of that because I want to go home and keep it simple. You don't have to do like, you know, this, you know, 15 step thing. No. We have products where, you know, you can recommend, you know, certain palettes that they can achieve, like, really natural looks because that's the other thing. They're scared when they come because they're, like, I've seen all this over all over social media where you have to, like, paint your face and do all this. It's like, no, you don't have to do that. Let's work with you. You've never worn any makeup before, so let's just start with, you know, some foundation and, you know, like, some nude you know eye colors and some mascara or whatever <laughs> and some lip gloss and they're like thrilled with that so mm -hmm. I I love it I I'm going to continue to do that because um that's that's where my market is right now and I mean it's rural there's a lot of people that you know um you know they're stay-at-home moms but they still want to feel like you know they can dress up or just you know just wear something that evens out their complexion and so yeah. yeah that's that's a huge huge market and so if people aren't doing that I, I feel like they're kind of missing the boat with that yeah and I also want to just touch on Lee what you just um, what you just said about that's your market so you know yeah. it's very important for people to understand where where they are like where where is your market who is your demographic um, and if you are in a smaller town, um, maybe you know you're not getting a commercial job because they don't shoot in your town. So who yeah. is in your town? If you are not going to leave your town and move to a larger market where you can get other jobs that you're looking for, what are you going to do for yourself in that market that you're in? And that's that's really it. So if your market are you know is is uh, is stay at home moms, or if it's um, you know the the nine to five, or if it's pageant beauty, or mm -hmm. if it's dance recitals, or if it's senior pictures or proms, or you know like whatever it is, figure it out, and then market yourself to that demographic, right? Mm -hmm. And then see yes. what you can offer that will set yourself apart for, from anyone else that's in your market also trying to target that same demographic. Yes. So there's, um, there's another question um, that's here. And um, Lucy asks, um, if you're showing your client some products as you're doing their makeup, do you suggest scheduling a separate one-on-one -on -one consultation to take them to take the time to explain the products or do you just do it right then and there um, basically for example she does a lot of bridal and she never really spends the time explaining what products she's using on those people the day of a wedding um, because of time constraints obviously um, I can tell you Lucy that obviously you're not gonna go through that the day of a wedding because yeah time constraints are crazy um, but if you have a trial with the bride, you should absolutely be taking the time through the trial. And then, um, you know, Ash, what, what would you say for, for maybe the people that didn't get a trial, that she didn't get a chance to spend time with, the people that she's meeting the day of the wedding, what would your follow-up be? 
Um, my follow-up would be, I would not take the time to explain that on the day of, like you said. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I would very much say um, my verbiage in the past has been, um, you know, I know that you love this product and, I, and that you want to know more, and I would love to show it to you. Today's a big day, and I don't want you to get behind. So let's get you on my books for next week or after you get back from your honeymoon and everything's settled down, and then we can go full force into whatever you're wanting to learn. And usually from there, they're, they're like, yes, absolutely, and like freaks out. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, so and you can do that for the bridesmaids too, right? That mm -hmm. exact same verbiage is perfect for the, you know, of course, without the honeymoon part. But, I mean, for the bridesmaids or the mothers of the bride and groom, you could do the same thing, couldn't you? I, I yeah. say that verbiage a lot for more than just bridal too. I mean, so for example, um, I might have someone come to me in regards to contouring, and I will show them the contouring, but they become fascinated with, say, something else. And so I'm, I'll give them a little tidbit, but then I say, if you want to, if you want to learn like fully how to do your eye makeup or something else, let's get you on my books so that we can do that for you, um, and go from there. So. And honestly, if you if you do have a chance to do a trial appointment with them, it's really important to talk about skincare and how what they can do up, you know, leading up to their wedding because. Right. If they're not taking care of their skin or using good makeup, it's really hard to do their makeup the day of. So if if it is at all possible to meet with them prior to do a trial, um, you know, it definitely comes up. But like Ash Ash said, it's in the follow up as well. Like so mm -hmm. to ask, like, is it okay if I follow up with you because I know there's some things that you really like. They're going to just say, yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine. And then you have the permission and then you can let them know, okay, well, I'm going to follow up with you in, you know, this amount of weeks to make sure you're home or whatever. But right. um, you have to let them know that, that it is something that they can get from you because they may not realize that. So, you know, they're, they're okay because once again, you're the professional, so you need to let them know that it's available and you're available and you know even if they live far away you know over Skype or with technology um, again they just want that one-on-one -on -one attention or that professional to let them know right. what it is that they can do every day exactly for sure exactly. yeah that's a great question though good for mm -hmm. you um, you know because like honestly when it comes down to it again um, if they haven't found anything they like they're still looking and once they feel it on their wedding day, and, and if you're using it for weddings, you know how good it photographs. And so right. they're going to notice that. I mean, almost every bride contacts me afterwards saying, oh, my gosh, I can't believe how it held up. <laughs> it yeah. looked amazing at the end of my day, and it photographs so well. I can't believe mm -hmm. how my pictures – because that's every bride, you know, they're like, are you sure it's going to last? And, you know, is it going to feel like I have a lot on? And I want it to be – you know, look in the photos, but I don't want to cake down. You know, this is everything right. that they're afraid of. So if you can provide that for them, they're already, like, going to want it. Yes. It's just kind of a given. Yeah. Yes. And not yeah, only that, really. but because it's such high quality, it, I mean, not only is it fantastic for bridal and proms and special events, but the fact that I can have, like, my talent published in high fashion magazines that are published all around the world, and it it be on par if not higher with everyone else in that magazine is fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. And so that's another reason why a lot of my clients love it is because you're getting mm -hmm. high quality professional, um, you know, high definition products uh, for incredibly affordable prices that right. are unbeatable, you know, and so, and that's another reason why I love it too. So, because <laughs> you want to be able, you can, you know, not everybody can go and, and buy a $70 powder, um, $80 powder um, right. that is pre-mixed and you're hoping it matches versus having a custom blended powder by someone who you can actually talk to um, at a, you know, a way more affordable cost. It's, the value in that is incredible. 
So. Yeah, well, that's we didn't even we didn't even touch on custom blend yet. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. Oh my god! Oh my god! We could talk uh, another hour. I know we have four more minutes left, and we didn't even touch on custom blend. So since you brought it up, do you want to just kind of give us a rundown of the benefits of being able to offer clients custom blended makeup? Yeah, for me, um, being able to offer the custom blended piece, you know, when it comes to makeup in general, a lot of times my clients, their biggest concern is not finding the right shade or finding a shade that kind of matches, but it makes their skin oily or dries them out. Mm -hmm. And so the very fact that I say, I can help you with that, and it gets them excited and they can't believe how incredibly... Um, like lightweight it is, yet coverage is fantastic and all these benefits that it has, that's my top seller right there is the value in that is that not only is it in, in, um, affordable, but it's also 100% for them that they're not going to be able to find anywhere else mm -hmm. um, and they've never been able to find anywhere else. And that's that's been my biggest thing is, um, you know, that's how more and more people come to me is like I heard you you know, my friend, you know, Samantha told me that you can find a shade yeah. that matches me. And, and I'm like, not fine, honey. Blend. Let's get it together. <laughs> <laughs> Make it from scratch. Let's Make it, from scratch. it. <laughs> um, Make it from nothing. <laughs> for me, when oh, it's I so first fun. found the custom <laughs> I try. But uh, <laughs> when I first found the custom blend and I had one made for me, um, I was like, this is really nice, but I ended up losing the bottle three days after having it made. I'm like, oh, no! <laughs> I know. And I had to go back to my old stuff until I, I found it. It had rolled under, like, the seat of my car at the time. And so I found it, thank God. But um, I had to go back to my old stuff. And my old stuff was my favorite because I thought it matched great and felt good. And when I went back to my old stuff, I was like, what is this cake mess that's on my face? Oh my oh, no. god! Gross. Like I didn't realize how heavy it truly was, or yeah. how much it really didn't match, or how much it really wasn't doing anything for my skin, um, until I found something better. One, and then two, my skin. Um, I've had adult acne. I've had acne, period, all my life. Even now that I'm in my thirties. And um, my skin is the best it has ever been, um, and it started when I went to Motives, um, and start, especially the custom wow. lens, because I didn't start with the skincare. I started with the custom blend and the Sculpt series, and just using the custom blend in and of itself has caused my skin to um, be absolutely glowing. I don't have as many as much acne breakouts or redness or anything like I did before. Um, I even shared pictures of that on my on my social media to say I can't believe what my skin looked like three years ago or four years ago or five years ago when I'm in my mid twenties compared to now and and I just turned thirty one. Uh, my skin looks so much better at the age of thirty one using motives than what it did in my early twenties. Wow. I mean, you know, and then adding the skincare on top of that has just only helped even more. So it's another reason why I, everything that I try. I, you know, it has either helped my skin in one way or another or has helped me financially or just blows everything else out of the water. And so the custom blend is where it's at, and that's just because of the, the, the minerals and the botanicals and things that it has in it to, to be able to heal your skin while you wear it. Um, in fact, I have a client that she has very, very deep, deep, deep um, acne scars. It makes her face swell. And she's been on the um, uh, Custom Blend Foundation and Powder for a, a little over a year now, a year and a half. And it's incredible the changes that it's made. I mean, she still has them, but they're not as severe or as indentated um, or anything like that compared to what it was before she used Motive. So, and she will tell you, in fact, we were just at a um, birthday party um, for a friend of mine the other day, and someone had mentioned something about foundation, and she had said, you should have Ashley mix one for you, and, I, and she, she didn't even know I did it. And so I said, um, yeah, I could do that. And she's like, well, well, tell me about it. And I said, let, let her tell you about it, because I can tell you all you want, but you're going to think I'm selling it <laughs> to you. 
<laughs> right? And, and so <laughs> it ended up being, you know, and she just went off the wall on how much it, how much it's gave her confidence, how much she, she used to hate wearing mm -hmm. makeup because it would cake and settle in her, in her acne scars and things like that, and how much it's helped heal her skin. And, you know, I can say that all I want in regards to, oh, it helps one person or another. But when you actually have that person sitting in front of you validating the things that I was already saying, it's a no-brainer to, to at least give it a try yeah. and, and go from there. So it's, it's a game changer. It, it is. is. I mean, that 200% that right. retail profit doesn't hurt either, huh? Yes. <laughs> and so... Honest, honestly, like if there's any professionals watching, just whoever invited you to this webinar, ask them about it. Ask them about motives. Um, ask them how we're different than anything else out there. Get more information and at least just see what we have because this, this is the custom blend here. This is everything right here and you can make whatever you want and it's fun. People love it. They talk about it. And they will be loyal to you because you have the formula. So salons absolutely love it. Makeup artists love it. Like it, clients love it. It's sort of like estheticians love it where, because of the healing. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Honestly, honestly, it is. Um, there's nothing like it. So you can totally customize not only, like you said, the color, but whatever their skin type is, the coverage, the finish. Um, you can make whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And so. They love it because they have not found anything normally until they use Custom Blend that works for them. Exactly. So it, 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 we could talk all night about that, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. We definitely could. We definitely could. But we are three minutes over, so we have to wrap this up. But like Lee said, if you have any questions to those who have tuned in live or for those who are watching us on the replay, just, you know, uh, our, our contact information is up there, or you can always ask whoever referred you to be watching this video. Um, we can answer any of your questions. Anybody can answer any of your questions. So, um, yeah. Ash, thank you so much for thank tonight. You. That was so great to have you, and we're actually going to be seeing you in a couple weeks, which I'm really excited about. In yes, Miami. I'm excited. Miami in February. I'm ready. Who's excited? <laughs> so fun. I love Miami. So yeah, excited. me too. So thank you guys so much. Make sure you follow us all on social media. Our information should be posted right now. Yeah, and, please. Um, we'll, we'll see you next time. You know, we're going to keep doing this. Like Lee always says, we're going to keep doing this until we run out of people to interview. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> So tune in the next time. Uh, we have some great people coming up, great interviews coming up from all around the world. Um, thanks again, Ash. Thank you again, Lee. Yeah, and thank thanks you guys. everybody watching. Cheers. Bye. We'll see you next time. You have a great night. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.